Cops, in general, have to be a bit sadistic. To show up to the scene of a suicide or murder or death of a child, walk right past that grieving spouse, the distraught mother or father, look at their dead loved one, place a hand on their shoulder, offer your condolences, then turn around to your partner and crack a joke about the whole damn scene. But you have to. You have to prove to your partner, to yourself, that this shit doesn't bother you. Because the second you let it, it breaks you as a person. That's why the suicide rate, divorce rate, and alcoholics are all rampant amongst us. That's why a lot of us are assholes. Because some shit you just can't unsee. This is the story of a call that bothered me. I had my firstborn three weeks before this call. A kid changes your perspective on life so much. Things that you could normally laugh at break your heart. I walked up to the apartment complex. My buddy was already on scene. It was a death call. That's all I knew walking up. He was talking to an older female who had obviously been crying. My partner didn't say a word to me. It just nodded for me to head upstairs. I brushed past the older lady without saying a word. I barely even looked at her. I always tell myself that if it ever happens to me, I'd keep my composure better than the people I deal with. I walked up the stairs. Medics didn't bother showing up, so the signs of death must have been pretty obvious. Inside the apartment, I'm greeted by my sergeant. He also doesn't speak to me. I look around for the body, but don't see it. I start to walk past my sergeant into the master bedroom. He stops me with a hand to my chest and just nods his head the other direction. I turn around and see a closed door. Across the door, big colorful letters. Katie and Alex's room, it says. Fuck me. A kid. This shit is the last thing I want to see with a three week old at home. I nervously opened the door expecting SIDS or something similar. It wasn't SIDS. It was a suicide. There was the body hanging by a couple of women's scarves tied together, hanging off the top bedpost of the bunk bed. It's been about three years since this scene and if I told you the face was burned into my brain I'd be lying. I don't remember the face one bit. I remember the color of the scarves perfect red and blue. I remember how his knees were just inches from the ground. All he had to do was stand up. He tied the scarves around his neck, went around the top bunk post, and just knelt down. He did it with his wife's scarves, and used his kid's bedroom, his kid's bunk bed. He took something from everyone in his family. Besides his own life, his kids will never look at a bunk bed again. His wife will probably never wear a scarf again, let alone be able to look at one without thinking of it being wrapped tightly around her husband's throat. The note he left was short and unapologetic. It simply stated that he couldn't bear to have his kids taken from him. He was in a custody battle with his wife. They were separated, but not divorced. He couldn't bear to be away from his kids, so he just knelt down and left them permanently. Destroying their childhood in one simple motion. Just below his hand, on the floor, was a stuffed teddy bear that he was clutching onto as he knelt. I turned around and walked out, called my wife and told her I loved her. The scene bothered me, but it also acts as a daily reminder to not just kneel down and give up.